Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So, in the last session, we have seen that what do you mean by builder pattern? We were talking about this particular pattern. And today we will see that how to implement the builder pattern with the Selenium. Like, do we have any use case where we can apply the builder pattern? Yes, of course, we can do that in the UI automation and or in API automation also. If you really want to do this, you can do that here. So for example, let's see if I have an application, I'm just going to simple open this particular page, registration page that I'll take it. And then you think about on this registration page in my page object model, if I create one method, let's see user registration method, then I have to supply something like four plus two, six parameters we have to supply it here, right? To fill this particular form. So for example, let's see if I have this particular registration page and this is my registration method, and then here we have to supply like this, that is string first name, then a string last name, then a string uh, telephone number or email ID and blah, blah, blah. N number of parameters we have to supply it here. Tomorrow, let's see what if you have uh, 20 different text fields are available and all are mandatory. Then in that case, 20 fields or 20 parameters you have to supply to this registration or registration method over here. Right. So it looks very ugly that so many parameters in the single method that you are supplying. Right. So we can solve this problem with the help of builder pattern. So what we have to do that we will create one register dot Java class, something like this. And this is my page class, the typical page object model. We are using it. I'm initializing like having my web our driver here. And these are the private by locators. And then we will create one public a page action method here something like this let's see this is my user registration method that i'm going to create that and this user registration method i'll be calling from the test class so this will be my test ng class and then from the test ng class we will supply the data <clears throat> later on if you really want to in integrate with the data driven approach or anything you can do it here so let's see how to do this so what we will do in the register class that according to the number of uh, fields which are available on the register account page same way that we are going to maintain these class variables also here. So let's see, these are the uh, six variables, first name, last name, email, telephone, password, confirm password, which is available here. And then what exactly I'm going to do it here. I'm going to create the constructor of this particular register class also here. And then this constructor says that you give me the builder class reference. So we will create one builder class also. Let's see, this is my register builder class reference. We are expecting it here. And then uh, with the help of this register builder, we will start supplying the data to the register class variable. Okay, so we will fill this particular constructor in some time. And then later on, whenever it's needed, I really want to fetch this information also with the help of getters. So here I'm just going to maintain only and only getters, not the setters, because I really want to achieve let's see, immutability also. I don't want to give any provision to supply the value with the help of setter to the register class. Right. Once the object is created with the variables and with the data, it is created. It is final in nature. So simple getters that I'm going to use it here. And then I'll do one thing. I'll create getters and setters, but I'll remove the setters from here. So let's see, quickly go to source and then generate the getters and setters. And then first getters and then setters for all the variables and then click on generate. So when I generate that, now I'm going to remove all the setters from here. Right. Try to understand because we don't need setters here. If your use case, you really wanted, okay, no, I really want to update the value later on for the registration field or anything, then only we need it. Otherwise, we don't need that. So it's always a good practice that you remove the setters from the main class, from the register class. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to create one builder class according to the, according to the design that we are having. Here. See this, just like we have product builder. Now we are going to create one, let's see, register builder class which will be the static inner class of the same class. So public static class and the class name that I'm going to write, let's see, this is my register builder class. Okay, this is my class name. And then in this class also, I'm going to maintain, let's see, all these private variables. So copy this and then simple paste it over here. And here, what exactly I'm going to do that? Here, I don't have any, see this, try to understand. Let's see, this is the form field. So it's not, it's not like, okay, out of six, only first name and the last name are the mandatory. All are mandatory, right? So I'm not going to create any constructor of the register builder. But let's see if you have a use case where only two fields are mandatory, 
So you wanted to, okay, you know, whenever you want to create the object of register builder, you have to supply the first name and the last name, which is mandatory here. But for us, everything is mandatory. So it does not make any sense to create the constructor of the register builder class here. So what should I do here? Here, I just really want to supply what? I just really want to supply the setters here, not even getters, right? Just simply supply the value with the help of setters. So here in the builder, I'm going to maintain all the setters, right? So let's do that. So simple right click on it and then generate getters and setters. And now I'll generate getters and setters, but I'll remove the getters from here. So, right. So let's see, I just maintain only and only setters. So I'm removing all the getters, see this from here. And then let's simply use it setters here. And then what I told you in the builder pattern, the builder class setters will return the current class object. It means this method will return this keyword over here. It means return the register builder. So instead of void, I have to write register builder here. So every setter will return the same class object, the current class object, that is the builder class object. It will return and every method we have to write what return this keyword also don't forget to write it then only we can achieve the method chaining right so let's see return this return this and this is also return this keyword we have written here so simple number of setters we have written and that's it the class is ready and then we have to create one more method like once we set it we have to create one build method also okay in the method chain what we will do dot build also at the end so simple build method build method says what build method says i'm going to return what i'm going to return the register the same way here i i want to return what i want to return the product class object so same thing same way i want to return the register class object so this is my register class object that i want to return and along with this i'm returning this keyword also here i'll tell you what you mean by this here it means this means the builder class object i'm going to give you and in the builder class with the help of setters we have already initialized all these variables here and once we get this particular uh, uh this keyword immediately i'll do one thing see this register builder that is what we are accepting it here right so that's why it's not giving me any error return this means register builder class object that you return to me and then, I mean, give it to me in the constructor will be called and then the register will be given over here. And once we get this particular register, what we need to do, I just need to initialize all the register variables. So this dot first name is equal to register dot first name here like that. Again, this dot last name is equal to register dot last name here. Same way, let's me initialize one by one email is equal to register builder dot email here. Same way this dot uh, telephone is equal to register builder dot telephone and then last two also this dot password is equal to register dot password and then this dot confirm password is equal to uh, confirm password here and then that's it. Okay, let me put the same equivalent also here and then all these variables got initialized here. Simple, right? So remember this thing that in the register class, I have the typical encapsulation that we are using it. Private data variables can be accessed with the help of all these getters. And then we have one simple constructor. The constructor is saying that give me the builder class object here. And builder class object is having all the setters and one build method. Don't forget to write the build method also here, which will return the actual product. The actual product for us is the actual register class it will return. Then what I'll do. I'll go to the page class and in this particular page class, we have to write the actions method like dot send keys, driver dot find element and all those things. But before that, how will you supply the data, right? I don't want to supply the hardcore data here, that actual data that we really want to fill. So what we will do, we will go to the test annotation here in the test class. And then here I'll start writing what, see this, I'm going to create the object of register dot register builder class object that I'm going to use it. See register builder is a static is the static class that's why we are able to access via the class name so the class name is what register register dot static class name here we can do it like this and then after that what do you want after that i start applying all the setter
right? So after that, I'll start supplying all the setters here. So C dot set, and then I'm going to write what is the first name. The first name I'm writing, let's see, C. Now I'll supply the data. So test ng class will supply the data. Remember that, okay? I don't want to hard code the data in my page class or in the register class. And then after that, what is the last name? The last name, let's see, I'm writing uh, my last name here. Let me input it here. And then again, I'm writing dot set. What is your, uh, let's see, email? Email I'm writing, let's see, Naveen at the rate open.com, something like this. Okay, open.com. And then after that, I really want to set what? I really want to set the telephone. So telephone also I'm supplying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is, let's see, the telephone. And then after that, I'm saying password and the confirm password also. So let's see, the password is uh, Naveen at the rate 1, 2, 3. And then dot set confirm password also Naveen at the rate same password I'm supplying it here so all the setters I'm using it so that's why all the setters are returning what the current class object and once we get the current class object again I'm able to call the last name then email then telephone so that's why we are able to achieve a complete method chain here and once we have all the values we have already set after that I'm going to write dot build method here and dot build method is returning what dot middle method will return the register here see this dot build method is returning the main class the register class here so can i store inside a registration or register page reference sorry register reference variable here like this that's it this is what we were expecting so what we actually did we actually created the object of this entire builder is giving me the object of register register class object I'm storing in the same register reference variable here and then now I'll go to my page class and I'll just start filling the form so driver dot find element by using first name dot send keys and use the same register dot what I'll start using my getters here so I'll say give me the first name here so see this so now you got it why the getters are important here in the register so that whenever I want to fetch the value, I can fetch it. Whatever the current values are going on for all these variables, typical encapsulation. And then I'm using it over here with the help of getters here. So get first name. So likewise, I'm going to create first name, last name, email, telephone, password, confirm password, all these variables. We have to quickly fill this with the help of by locators here. So let confirm password and that's it. After that, see, I'm not filling the, I'm just filling the form. I'm not clicking on continue button or checking the checkbox that you can do it by your own simple add the by locator and then fill the form, click on continue, return something. The user is successfully registered or not, and then validate in the test here. Okay. Validation assertion. We are not focusing right now, right? We're just implementing the builder pattern to avoid n number of parameters in the registration method here. So see this, this registration method is saying, give me the register class object. And that's it. After that, I'll start using all the getters and then I'll start using it. That's it. I'll start filling the form, right? So how to call this method now? In order to call this method, we have to create the object of register page. We have to create the page class object here. So register page, let's see, this is my uh, register page is equal to new registration page and the here also constructor will be called and the constructor is asking for the driver. We are supplying the driver. We have already initialized the driver equal to new Chrome driver here. Import that as well. And then after that, simple registration page dot what the method that we have to call it. The method name is user registration. It says, give me the register page class object. Sorry, register class object, register class object that we are already having it and I'm supplying it here and that's it. So what will happen? User registration method will be called. This is my register reference and with the help of reference, I'll start taking the values, all the getters and I'll be calling it here and then all the methods, all the getters will return what? Whenever you call it, it will return first name, last name, email, confirm password and everything here. Right? So let's see, is it really working or not? So simple run as test ng and let's see, is it really filling the form or not? We just want to fill the form. See this absolutely working fine. It's filling the form here. That's it. So I hope it's clear that when to use the builder pattern. It's not like everywhere we are going to use it. If you see that, okay, there is a long form or big registration form or administration form is available where n number of values that we have to supply 
instead of passing so many parameters in the method, why don't you use the builder pattern here and achieve the pattern like a kind of this thing, like all the setters in the method chain and then start filling the data here. Exactly same way we use it in the actions class also like dot build dot perform, right? Same thing we use in address a shot also given dot when dot then assert then end and all those things we do it in the rest a shot also we use it the so same similar kind of builder pattern we can use it there and here we have created our own builder pattern for the registration. I hope this is clear. Okay, see this some people what they do that okay they create the final also here. Right, so that no one can directly change and update the value because this is the constant variable. So here you are also making it that okay, fine. All the variables are final in nature. It means no one can once it is initialized, no one can change it. The value, okay. Although we don't have any setters, but still, safer side we are writing the final keyword also for the immutability. And here there are no setters. No one can update the value. If you have, then you can write the setters also and then remove the final also from there. But we wanted, okay, no, this register class should be immutable class. It means no one can change once the object is created, object state and the variables cannot be changed here. So better to use final also here, right? I hope this is clear. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.